All you need to get started tracking your conversions with Google Ads and Tag Manager is the confirmation page URL of either your landing pages or your checkout process. So timestamps below along with some other helpful Tag Manager videos to get up and running with other tags and pixels and of course install Tag Manager if you haven't already. So here let's go ahead and jump right into my screen and we will set up something called a trigger which is the first step to creating conversion tracking with any platform inside of Tag Manager and I think this is where it really shines. So jumping into our demo tag manager account here, I'm already inside of the container that I want to be editing and I'm going to go ahead and click on triggers on the left hand side. Now you'll see we don't have a trigger yet so we'll go and click on new. Now this is not to be confused with creating a new tag so we don't need, all we need right now is that confirmation page URL in order to set this up. So we're going to click on new We'll go ahead and give the trigger a name. I recommend just naming it whatever the action is. So in this particular instance, this person has just become a lead. And if this was a trigger for a sale, then we'd say something like sale, right? <laughs> Keep it simple. We'll go ahead and click on tag configuration here. Click on page view because we want the conversion tag to fire when someone has hit a certain page because if someone hasn't checked out or entered their name and email, they're not gonna hit the confirmation page. So the confirmation page tells us that they took the action that we actually care about. So we'll click on some pages here because remarketing is already tagging everyone who's, who's visited any page. And instead of page host name, we're going to click on page URL. You can always get more advanced with your triggers later, right? We, we're just gonna keep it simple and try not to break anything. And we'll go ahead and click on con from contains and we're going to click equals. Now you see there are a lot of things that you can do here. You can get really fancy. There's no need to get fancy here. So we're going to go ahead and click on equals and then we're going to paste in the URL of our confirmation page. So in this particular instance, we have a landing page, we're asking for their name and email. And then once they do that, they're taken to a confirmation page. So the confirmation page, that's the URL that you want to put here. If someone's on your site, and of course this works with pretty much any e-commerce site, and they check out and they're looking at that confirmation page or order summary page, actually what you're going to want to do, instead of doing the exact URL, you're going to come back here and use contains and so in the box instead of the exact URL you're going to say contains something like order confirmation order summary or whatever is shows up in the URL of your e-commerce platform when someone has completed a purchase or purchase completed and so that's the only difference between a landing page and if you're doing anything with e-commerce and that will just make sure that the trigger fires every time someone hits the confirmation page. So that's all we're trying to do here. Hopefully that was enough rambling to, to help figure out what to put in this box and whether you should use equals or contains. So we'll go ahead and move on here. We'll go ahead and click on save. And once we do, you'll see we have our new trigger. You can set up as many triggers as you want. And I'll go ahead and go back to overview here. And you can see that our we have a workspace change in the bottom and there's a notification up here that we have one change and once we hit submit and publish it, then this trigger will be live. Although we don't want to do that yet because we need to set up and then install our conversion tag. And at this point, what you want to do is have some sort of documentation that helps you keep track of all of this because as you create more triggers, as you add more tags, it's going to get quite confusing. So I will link up in the description to our Tag Manager playbook. It's the exact same organizer and template that we use to make sure that when we're working with ourselves or our clients, we stay organized and know what the important URLs are and what is firing when. So I'll link that up in the description. Now let's go ahead and talk about creating your conversion. So this time we're going to jump over to Google ads to create our conversion. Obviously, if you already have your conversion and all that fun stuff, timestamps below to just skip to the install. So all you need to do is come up here to tools and settings inside of your Google ads account and then click under measurement, click on conversions. Once you do, if you've never created a conversion before, you'll see a page that looks something like this. Google's always playing with their interface and we can click on conversions. Now, if you already have some, then there'll be a giant blue plus button around here that you can click on to get to the exact same next page, which is this one. So we're going to be setting up conversions for our website. So we'll go ahead and click on website here. And then we have a lot of options, especially the last ones you probably don't wanna mess with, but we'll go through this one by one. So first is the easy part, the category. What is this? Did someone purchase, add to cart? 
And in our particular instance, it's going to be submit a lead form. They're just entering their name and email on a landing page. So that's what I'll go ahead and do here. We'll go ahead and give it a conversion name. And then you have the option down here to select a value. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say there's no value. And that's simply because it's a name and an email and we're not collecting any payments. Now, what's really cool is you can actually do some things with the data layer where Google Ads and Tag Manager can actually look into that sales confirmation page and see the exact amount that you were paid and then use that inside of your conversion metrics inside of Google Ads, which is really cool. It also takes some development experience and it's really easy to mess up. So if you want to track your actual, that's completely unnecessary, right? You're like, thanks, thanks for nothing, Jason. So if you want to actually have some sort of conversion value when someone's buying something in your Google Ads account, I would recommend if you can use the same value for each transaction if you're just selling the one product or one product or service and make sure whatever that number is, it's what the sale price is minus your payment processing, right? Because you want to make sure that that number represents what you're actually receiving. Um, because payment processing can sometimes be significant and it can hurt your campaign in the long run. Okay, I digress. Let's go ahead and go down to count now. So underneath count, you're going to want to click on one. Now, if someone's buying something, then you'll click on every because you're getting more money because they're buying more. Whereas opposed to here, we're doing an email. So it doesn't really matter if the same person enters their email again. Like we, it's the same lead. So we don't want to count them twice. Whereas sales, we could totally count them twice. Now, this information down here, I recommend leaving alone uh, for now because it can significantly impact your ads performance, especially if you're using any sort of specialized bidding like cost per acquisition or target ROI or maximize conversions. But we'll go ahead and click down here and for 30 days, click through conversion, go ahead and leave that. That is, if someone clicks your ad and any time in the next 30 days, they take that conversion, this ad gets the credit essentially. And well, and I say essentially because there's an asterisk, of course. And then view through conversion, if someone just looked at the ad but didn't click it, but then took the action some other way, within a day, do you give this ad credit? And just leave it at a day because you don't wanna give an ad credit that they didn't click on if they entered their name and email. It's, it's a little confusing. So that's why I say just leave it at one day. And then finally we have include in conversions, which you do want to do. Go ahead and leave that box checked. And then the type is going to be last click. And this just means if they clicked 10 ads, which ad gets the credit? The last one. They have some other advanced ones. Really, it's just messed up any client account we've put it in. So we just tend not to do it unless there's a really special case. Just leave it at last click. You're going to be so much happier that you did. Uh, don't try and be fancy here. So we'll go ahead and click on create and continue with all that extra information you probably didn't need about those last settings. So we'll go ahead and go into tag manager here and we're going to copy our conversion ID and our conversion label. So these are the two things that we need in order to copy paste into our tag manager account so we can publish it to our site. So I'll go ahead and copy these into our documentation. Again, link in the description to copy ours, or you can go ahead and create your own. And then I'll just go ahead and click on next at the bottom, click on done. And now we have our first conversion for this account. You can always come up to the plus button to go back through that interface to create more conversions in the future. So with that, we're ready to install our tag because we have our conversion ID and label. So we'll jump back over to Google Ads. And if you're getting some value out of this video, don't forget to hit that like button. You can subscribe for more videos just like this one. Let's go ahead and click on new tag here. So I'll click on create new tag. I'll give our tag a name. And this is just AW for AdWords conversion. And then what the actual name of the conversion is. And of course you want to leave the name of your conversion pretty consistent across your all of your tracking and documentation. Now, I say AW even though Google Ads is not called AdWords anymore. And the reason that we do that is because GA could stand for Google Ads or it could stand for Google Analytics. Thanks Google for making sure our acronyms don't work anymore or our abbreviate, that's not an acronym. This is an abbreviation. Okay, I, I, I do know definitions. There we go. So anyway, that's why I just say AW. You could use whatever you want. It just got really confusing because people would have GA and we didn't know if it was analytics or Google Ads. Again, 
the, anyway, just do whatever, would do whatever you want. I'm rambling. So we'll go and click on tag configuration now, and we will click on Google ads conversion tracking. If you want to learn how to set up remarketing, I'll link that up in the cards in the description. So we'll go ahead and click on conversion tracking here, and then we will paste in our conversion ID and our conversion label. So I'll jump over to our documentation and you'll see the conversion name in our documentation is the same to help us stay organized. We'll copy the label and copy the conversion ID, paste them in here, and then we'll scroll down to triggering. Now, unlike what you've done with remarketing, maybe you set up a Facebook pixel or your Google ads remarketing already, you don't want to click all pages. We want to click on the trigger that we just created. So we're telling Tag Manager only fire the conversion when someone sees this page and people only see the page after they've taken the action that you want, which is buy or join your email list. So we'll go ahead and click on our trigger here. And that is all we need to do to set up this new tag. So we'll come up here and click on save. And then you'll see we have two workspace changes now. We have the trigger that we set up a couple minutes ago, because it always takes uh, an embarrassing long time to make these videos. And then a few seconds ago, we just created our new tag. So that's the conversion tag that we got from Google Ads. So we'll come up here and click on submit, and we'll just enter a quick description of what we did. I like to copy and paste all the information over again. That way when someone comes back literally years later, we have tag managers that are over eight or nine years old now, you can easily, they can easily go through and see what the changes were. So we'll go ahead and click on publish. And now the tag is live on our site, ready to fire every time someone hits that confirmation page and you are good to go. Well, not, not, almost almost good to go. You probably wanna check that it's actually working properly. So that's going to be our next section where we're going to verify the tag and make sure you keep watching because we have to talk about conversion linker. I should have brought that up earlier. Okay, so go ahead and go over to Google or your favorite search engine in a Chromium based browser. And I just use Google Chrome and you can go and click on tag assistant and then you can add to Chrome. And what this will allow you to do is see the tags that are firing on your site. Now, Google does have their new preview mode and it's really, really cool. But just to keep things simple, all you need to use is the tag assistant. So we'll go ahead and click on done here. And then we have to click enable every time we want it to work on a page. So we'd go ahead and click enable. And now let's go ahead and jump over to the confirmation page. So that URL that was pasted in in the very beginning when we set up the trigger, this is that page. So all we need to do is come to this page and refresh it, clicking enable, and then we'll be able to see the tags that fired on this page. And here is the conversion tag that is firing. So this conversion tag should only fire on this page with this exact URL. And that's how we make sure that we can easily track conversions. Yes, you can do conversion tracking with a button click or a form submit or a pop-up, but using conversion tracking in conjunction with an actual page with its own unique URL is still the best way to go. So that does it for making sure the tag is actually installed correctly. Now we want to install something called the conversion linker. And according to Google, this just helps them better track conversions, especially across devices. Now, the good news is there's really not a whole lot you need to do here. You just make a but few button clicks and it installs it automatically for you. So inside of our Google Tag Manager account, we actually don't go to Google Ads for this. We click on new tag here, and then we're going to just call this conversion linker. And then we can scroll down and click on conversion linker right here. So we'll click on conversion linker. There are some options here. If you are using a subdomain for your landing pages or your sales process, maybe you have a main website that has all your products and then you're using a third party for your checkout, you're definitely going to want to mouse over and see how to actually set up conversion linker correctly for your situation. Here, we just have the one domain, so I'm going to <laughs> leave it alone. And we'll go ahead and click on triggering and we just want it to fire across all pages. We'll go ahead and click on save save and we have our one workspace change the conversion linker and i'll go ahead and click on submit here just say that we installed the conversion linker it's firing all pages 
and we'll go ahead and click on publish. And with that, you're good to go with your Google Ads conversion tracking with Google Tag Manager. So comment below if you run into any issues or your general questions when it comes to Tag Manager and proper conversion tracking. We do our best to read and reply to every single one. So hit that like button, subscribe for more Tag Manager videos just like this one and other traffic tutorials to help you be successful marketing your business online. And until the next, keep building the business you love.